The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 24th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't call in, We've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send, me an email. send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, since, uh, if you're inside our Tigers demo, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got uh, sort of a sea of green out here. You got all the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside, about nine tenths percent for the Dow, or 283 points. Now nah, eight tenths for the S&P, 35 points. One percent for the Nasdaq 100, 145. One and a quarter percent for the Russell, 22. One percent for the semis. That's a 35 point move. Gold's off 14 bucks. Silver's down 22 cents. Light three crude is off a buck 68. Natural gas is up a penny. 30 year Treasury down a half a point at 109.17, and it's at King dollar. That's up 651. One pips at least. I've got a 10 minute delay there. Lead the charge, by the way, dollar wise, the upside, you've got micro strategy up 60 bucks, 16%. MedPace Holdings, 18%, 42 bucks. Spotify, 17 bucks, 11%, 24% for Agilisys. Broadcom's up 15 bucks, that's nearly 2%. To the downside, Fair Isaac Corp, down 22 bucks, 2.5%. TransUnion, 15 and change, 24%. HEA Healthcare, 4% or 10 bucks. 5% for Equifax, that's off 950. Calix is off eight bucks, that's a 20% move. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin Let's begin with the dollar. Let's go take a look at what's going on there. First, we'll just start here. We can see that the dollar yesterday, so if we take open up this chart here, and we just expand this out just a tad. Yesterday was the first time since the uh, bottom out here in July that we had a close below the bottom of a profile, which should have signaled to you and I a change of trend. Now, we had some other smaller swing points or swing points out here that price was able to get below, but doesn't matter. Do we have a change in trend now? The answer would be no. We need two consecutive closes below support or two consecutive closes above resistance to tell us about breakouts or breakdowns. So at this stage here, yesterday's move has to be termed a false move, at least as, as of 11.09 in the morning. At day's end, maybe we have a different picture. Let's go take a look at the different picture. By taking a look at the different picture, we're going to look at the three components that make up the majority of the U.S. dollar index. So let's go take a look at those. The first one being the euro. In the upper left-hand corner, you've got the daily time frame chart, a 57.6% weighting. What the euro did was it formed a TD9 count bottom. Let's just simply expand out the chart. Form a nice TD nine count bottom pattern out there. And what took place yesterday, what took place today, is price ran right into resistance, right smack dab into that TD nine count breakdown level at 1.0673. And to show you how this pattern works out there, there's not a single tech 
technician that would have chosen that level as the breakdown area. Yet that is exactly where price gravitated to. Now, if the U.S. dollar index is going to head lower, it's going to need the euro to close above for two consecutive sessions on the daily time frame, that 1.0673. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. We'll take a look at the uh, short-term charts to see exactly where we're at, or we'll look at the 30-minute time frame charts to take a look at that. But uh, short of seeing some type of um, bottom, some type of low on the intraday chart here, price may be targeting 1.053. That is its red oscillator unchanged line. So you've run into resistance. You have a clear line of demarcation where a change in trend signal for the euro would come into play. And that would be two consecutive close of a 106.73. Now let's go take a look at the second underlying weighted instrument inside the U.S. dollar index. And that is the Japanese yen. Yesterday we talked about the yen that had the potential to form a TD9 count top. It was dependent upon its close. It did not do what it needed to do. So there is no count pattern out here. What is out here is a road momentum indicator top. The only way that gets negated is a close above 150.16. That's, in essence, what the yen needs to do in order to, um, it, well, if it does do that, what we're going to see is the yen is going to get weaker and the dollar will get stronger. So right now, it's just been a very sideways, very small body candle move over the last two, four, five sessions out there, really last six of seven sessions. So don't have a great take other than the euro's trading sideways after forming that road momentum indicator top. Let's go take a look at the pound. How about the pound? What is the pound doing? Well, the pound, what it did was it tested. Let's take a look at it here. We draw a line. I'll just pull out my line tool. It's going to be a thicker one. But what the pound, oh, let me just do this here first. What the pound did was it tested and rejected the bottom of its swing point out there. So we don't have volume uh, when we take a look at currency pairs out here. But you can see that the swing point was from October 11th. We have a successful test of rejection. Well, you know the expression, Tom coined it, I'll pay him a dollar. If he can't bust him up, tries to bust him to the downside. In this case here, for the uh, daily time frame chart for the Great British Pound, that bust to the downside would be at about 1.21211 out there. But again, it's moving lower. That's what's putting strength inside the U.S. dollar index. So it's not just a matter of paying attention to the U.S. dollar index and, let's say, its profiles, but really what's going on underneath the covers. Well, let's go check on the shorter time frames underneath the covers. And for that, we're going to go ahead and change our window again. We're going to get to the 30-minute time frame chart. Those should pull up automatically. Here we can see, just to take a look at how these TD9 account breakdown and breakout levels work here you've got the euro pulling all the way back and finding potential support at that breakout level that's at 1.0590 so what we know is there's no bottom signal as we speak just yet you're in bar number seven uh, but if price closed below 1.059, that suggests an even further move lower, uh, a move higher in the U.S. dollar, lower in the euro, with 1.0570 being its next price target. In the case of the yen. The yen's had a nice little rally, formed a road's momentum indicator bottom. It did that at about 3.30 this morning, or was that this yesterday morning? That was um, this morning out here. And now we've got a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top took place at 9.30. If price closes above that high, I would say we're going to rally further. And that's a true statement. What we're going to do is we'd rally up into that TD9 count breakdown resistance level of 149.94. If, in fact, the uh, Japanese yen does that, it'll get weaker. The U.S. dollar will get stronger. So that's an area to pay attention to. In the case of the Great British Pound, I don't really have a top out here. I'm not really looking for the top. I'm looking for what it's doing right now. And what it's doing right now negated a TD9 count bottom on a 30-minute time frame. This is telling us that the pound wants to continue to weaken. And its price target, 1.2149. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. We're going to look at Bitcoin for Coda and video from John C. And I'd love many, many more requests. Steve at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. How about that Texas Ranger Houston Astros series? Every every home game was lost by the home team out there. Uh, it was pretty extraordinary. Great game uh, yesterday. Uh, Texas Rangers look pretty darn uh, good. I think uh, they would uh, prefer to play today. But uh, I don't know when the actual World Series starts. I would think it's in a couple of days, with us being so late in October, maybe Thursday, Friday, something along those lines. In any event, uh, let's get back to the uh, charts here. Our first request from Coda inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Bitcoin. So what I've got up here is the actual continuous contract. This way we can take a look at multiple time frames to get a feel for what's going on. So I'm going to start from right to left. We're going to take a look at the monthly time frame. And on the monthly time frame, what we can see is that there's an A to B equals CD to the upside that is uh, forming as we speak. So the B point out here, I'll just simply draw this in. We'll draw an A to B, and then I'm just simply going to move this over to the C point out there, which is uh, lowest, whoops, lowest low would have been last month out there after that high. I was going to try to move this. I thought I had resolved that, but apparently not. Hmm. Wow didn't mean to do that that's for sure but let's see if that moves now there we go okay so i'm going to use that as approximation so right now on a monthly basis bitcoin is giving you a projection of somewhere around 40 this is called 42,000. i've got about 41 095 something like that so that's what the, you've got an a to b equals cd on a monthly time frame don't know whether it's been confirmed by volume or not but that's still the pattern that's in play out here we don't have anything in the weekly chart to suggest otherwise on a weekly basis we bar become bar number seven it says you could get a td nine count top between next week and then two weeks out so we're talking about nearly a month out here. Uh, short of that, what Price wants to do is go target the 43.010 level. That's its next TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So the monthly looks beautiful. The weekly looks good. And on a daily basis, nice big move today out here. You have taken out a second uh, TD9 count breakdown area. 
Uh, this formed a nice Roachmintum indicator bottom. It confirmed that bottom back here on September the 12th. Folks, it's a great pattern to learn. Uh, easy, easiest way to learn that is just subscribe to Mastering Probability, and you've got uh, workshops there that will take you through that. It's a great uh, pattern to uh, be paying attention to. So on the daily time frame, this suggests that it wants to move higher. So as far as move higher to where, you know, you've got the A to B equals C. I'd have to say if it continues to rally, today's going to become bar number seven on a daily basis. What I would be looking for, Coda, is a potential short-term top to form between tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. So by the weekend, you should see some you could see some type of top. Now we have to come back and make sure that the TD nine count pattern completes. It's only Tuesday. So let's come back and take a look at it on Thursday if you're here or on Friday and see if it's actually uh, completing that pattern. But otherwise, everything here in uh, Bitcoin looks pretty good. So, Code, I hope that that helped you out. I know that somebody else was uh, mentioning coin or maybe you had mentioned coin. So I'll go ahead and pull up Coinbase. C-O-I-N is the ticker symbol here. And as we take a look at Coinbase. On a monthly base, I don't have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside um, out there because of this month's transactions or, or activity. On the weekly basis, but price is, and, and you've got resistance on Coinbase is 9403, top of its monthly profile. On a weekly basis, things look good because price is trading above 8043. That's the top of its weekly profile. It looks to me like what Coinbase wants to do is go target its TD9 count breakdown level. That's on the daily time frame, and that's up at 9505. You're trading at about 8846 as we speak right now. So that's Coinbase. That is uh, Bitcoin, and I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for. John C. inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at Google. So as we pull up uh, Google, ah, I'm sorry, NVIDIA. Looking at one thing, thinking another, saying another. But now we're going to take a look at NVIDIA. What do we know about NVIDIA out here? So what do we know? What kind of pattern do we have? We've got a test A and rejection of a swing point to, uh, yesterday. That swing point was from September 21st. Now, volume there was 45 million shares. Yesterday, there was volume of 47 million shares. Typically, what happens when you press into a swing point even if you rejected it, which it did yesterday, you get back and you test that. Now, that still may unfold. doesn't look like that's going to unfold as we speak today. Price is above the center profile level, which is at 429.44. Its price target, and BD, that is, John, is going to be that oscillator and change line. That's 436.25 or thereabouts. If you see a close above the thereabouts, 43.25 or so, then you're going to look at a move up to 442.77. If price can take out 442.77, you should get back to the 472.89 area out there. Monthly chart in NVIDIA, got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, has a TD9 count top. Weekly has a TD9 count top. Yet in the case of both of these instruments, price is pulled back to an area of support. On the weekly chart, that is the bottom of its profile. So 408.99 is a key level to be watching on NVIDIA. On the monthly time frame, there's a new profile that is forming right now. The top of that profile is 502. So that's way up there. Where price is testing, this is a bearish, bullish structured monthly profile. And so the buy zone is between 380 and 410. So let's restate this. What do we have? You've got a top that is in a monthly basis that is traded into support and so far it's held. We have the same on the weekly basis. So their patterns could be completed out here because support is held. What we've got on the daily time frame is in essence support is held even though it was tested with too much volume. Support being the prior swing point from back on September the 20th. So at this stage we believe that um, NVIDIA should rally up to about the 426 level, maybe 442 and beyond that we'd be looking at the 472. So John, I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. Let's go to our next request. This is from uh, Dennis in West Palm Beach. And Dennis wants to take a look at Google. That's where the Google came from. And if we take a look at uh, Google, Google right now is trading above. So it formed a uh, Gartley buy pattern. And it did that yesterday when it generated that uh, bullish piercing candle. Now what we have is price is uh, trading above its green oscillator and change line. As long as price closes above that today, it being 139.89, price should then go target resistance. Now the two resistance levels I'll give you, one is the top of the profile. 141.49. The second is the actual TD9 count top that it formed, which was the high from October 12th. 
And that high, 142.38. If price can take out 142.38, then you're off to the races. Where would those races take us to? I'd have to say they'd be targeting 152.10. Why 152.10, Steve-O? Because that is the monthly TD nine count breakdown resistance level. We are in bar eight. Uh, I don't know if we'll complete a bar eight. We should complete bar eight with it being the 24th. When you have a successful bar eight, in other words, when I say successful, it either denotes the high or the low of the TD nine count pattern, then odds favor 90% of the time that it will go ahead and complete a TD nine count top. Well, from a monthly basis, that would be next month out there. Uh, you're trading above last month's high. It looks bullish. That would really be my target. It would be about 152.10 out there. Uh, you're going to be in day number two of consecutive moves to the upside for Google. That uh, Let's see what uh, we have out here and what its normal dance steps are. A lot of two steps uh, to the upside. So you could conceivably get a, a pullback uh, tomorrow. Uh, when we take a look at uh, Google, or it could extend itself and generate maybe three, four, even five consecutive uh, closes higher out there. So Google looks pretty good. Looks pretty good from a daily standpoint. Looks pretty good from a weekly standpoint. It looks pretty good from a monthly standpoint. So I hope that helped you out there, uh, Dennis, and uh, thanks so much for the request. Only one more request in the system. That's from Dan, who wants to take a look at LAC. So we'd love all your help. Steve at TFNet.com. Randy Ping inside the Tiger's Den. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN.com.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the uh, Dow up 207, S&P's up 25, NASDAQ 99, Russell's up 14, semis are up 19 points. Let's get to our next request out here. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at ticker symbol LAC. So let's uh, see what we've got going on here with LAC. That is trading uh, down at about 662. Now, what LAC did yesterday was it uh, completed a TD9 count bottom. It did it with the bar following bar number nine out there. So you've got a bottom that is in place out here. That bottom remains in place on the daily time frame unless price closed below yesterday's low. Yesterday's low, so this is what you'd want to watch, is down at 632. Now, what should transpire here is price should bounce up and test that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 796. So the daily time frame, Dan says it can get up to 796. I think you were talking about 8 850 or 650, something like that. So I'd go beyond the 650 right now with that daily TD9 count bottom of say 796 in looking at the daily time frame chart. Of course, all bets are off if price closed below yesterday's low. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we actually have a wave number seven pattern that is present. And so therefore, now the only way that gets confirmed would be next week on Friday with price not trading below this week's low, whatever that ends up being. So the weekly chart is okay, potential bottom, but we don't get a confirmation until, you know, next Friday. With regard to a monthly time frame chart, price is below profile support. And on a monthly basis, this is communicating to you and I that 148 is open. It's fair game. Now, we're not making that call yet. We wouldn't make that call yet. We would come back to that as a possibility if we see a close below yesterday's low. So I'd wait to watch. Well, I wouldn't wait or anything, but I'd watch yesterday's low out there. Again, that's at 632. If we get below that, close below that, or certainly close below that for two consecutive, if we close below that for one session, price is headed lower. Now, I see some plenty of A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. So if you were to generate a bullish reversal candle, you would confirm a buy the D point pattern. But it hasn't been able to do that. So we take a look at Lithium Americas Corp. Let's come back out here and take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. And on a 30-minute basis, it has a Rogemontum indicator bottom. So to go along with the daily TD9 count out here, it's got a Rogemontum indicator bottom. Now, what we don't like about this 30-minute chart here, Dan, is that price ran right up to where it would if it was only a counter trend move for this time frame. And that was the center of its bullish structure daily profile. It was a 684 out there. Now, price is also pulled back and is testing this red oscillator and change line. If it closes below that on a 30-minute basis, it being, looks like about 659, but let me give you the right number. It is at 659. If price closed below 659 on a 30-minute basis, that says you get back and you test that recent swing low from 12 o'clock um, yesterday. And that low is at 632. <clears throat> you close below that, that would say lower price out here. So uh, you really like to see price hold this oscillator and change line. And you'd really like to see price close above 698 out there. Of course, that gets you back to your 650 uh, type level out there. Uh, no, it's already trading. What did I talk about 650? That's your entry price, I guess. Is that what you were saying? Uh, I saw sometimes it's always my target entry. Oh, that's your target entry. Okay. So that was your target entry. Mm. You know, you got pretty darn close to it, right? Uh, pretty darn close to what was the uh, low from yesterday? Was that uh, six? Uh, oh, you you got your entry, six thirty two. So you should be in. You got that nice uh, TD nine count bottom. So you've got a pretty decent risk reward trade because if you close below yesterday's low, you know, just simply, at least my tools would suggest that you would close out that trade. So that's Lithium America Corp. Dan, I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for. Nancy is looking at Microsoft. You're welcome. As we take a look at Microsoft, Nancy's got some call options, I believe, or some I. I I just wrote it down. Only had enough time to write it down. Let's see. I've got a call expiring next Friday. Looking for 3:33 today. Well, Nancy, when we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for Microsoft, you've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation sideways move with inside its profile levels. That's after forming a TD9 count top. So the top of the profile is at 331.39. 
And you want to get to, what was it, 333? Yeah, I lost it. I lost 333. Um, yesterday's high was 332.73. Um, we're going to have to go to the short-term time frame chart. So right now, you're up at resistance. You're up at resistance out here. If price can close above that, well, then you could get 337, quite frankly. But right now, we've got that good old-fashioned consolidation with inside the daily profile. Let's take a look at some short-term time frame charts here for Nancy. Let's first pull over a 30-minute time frame chart. I got you, Al. So we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. You've got a Roach momentum indicator bottom and a TD9 count top. So, and price pulled back and it's testing support. It's still with inside its profile. So 332.73 is its resistance zone out there. So I know you want 333 even, Stephen, or so. You've got a ton of resistance up at that 332-ish area out here. That's on the 30-minute time frame. You've got it on the uh, daily time frame as well. So not so sure about that one, uh, Nancy. So um, I just be careful knowing that price is tested and rejected resistance. Let's go out to uh, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? All right, Steve. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, nice to hear your voice. Uh, you are interested in uh, natural gas, UNG. Is that correct? Yeah, I just did a quick count, but I think we're getting uh, maybe today is bar nine of the TD9 count. But could you just take a look at that, please? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. I'm also going to... Where is natural gas? Great. On a different uh, chart out here. So let's go take a look at UNG. In fact, you and another, somebody else uh, maybe wrote in and want to take a look at UNG as well. So today will become bar number eight of a TD9 count. And that all it has to do is close below the low of bar number four. So that's an easy thing. That closes up at 718. Tomorrow, in order now, the low of the pattern here, Brent, is on bar number seven as we speak. So that was yesterday's low. So price is going to have to poke below yesterday's low um, today, tomorrow, the following day out there. And yesterday's low would be at the uh, 674 in order to potentially trigger a TD9 count pattern out here. Uh, also, tomorrow, price would have to close below. The bar, bar number five, that low is at 691. So those are your close below levels for bars to complete. But Nat, UNG has got a spike below yesterday's low in order to potentially trigger a TD9 count. Uh, Brent, okay, if, uh, any questions about this? Because I'd like to go take a look at the underlying instrument out here, and that would be at least natural gas. Now, I don't know in natural gas if it is just the November contract or it's November, December, something like that. Do you, do you have any idea what's currently in the uh, holdings? I'm not positive, but I wouldn't mind. Could you? I can't see the number on the chart, but on the daily, there's that, uh, I guess, TAS level or something down there, the, the red line. What's, what's that level? That's, so 660. So that's the TD9 count okay. uh, breakout area. Uh, so if uh, yeah, I'm in trouble with my keyboard. So that that would be that could be an, an, an entry area. Certainly, uh, you'd like to see that if, in fact, wow, Brent, I'm sorry, I've lost my keyboard. <laughs> I haven't lost it. It's sitting in front of me. It's sitting in front of me, but it's not behaving. So that always becomes a problem. But uh, let's see if I fixed it. Wow, this is quite a technical difficulty out here. Hey, Brent, we're going to a break. Would you be kind enough to hold on? And we'll come back and I'll give Absolutely. you all the information you need on UNG and natural gas. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're taking a look at the uh, UNG, uh, natural gas. Uh, Brent, I did uh, check during the break, and it's the December contract that is representing the majority of the uh, UNG holdings. What I also have up on my screen is the uh, seasonal chart here for the last 32 years for natural gas. And what this shows us, this shows us that October, November, and December are just horrible months typically. So we are in the very unfavorable seasonal cycle time frame. The favorable seasonal cycle time frame for uh, natural gas begins right around the middle of February, February 20th on average over this uh, 32 years. or that's, that's maybe the first bottom takes place around February 14th or so. So you're in a very difficult uh, time frame for natural gas out there. It doesn't mean that it's going to follow along that pattern, but I certainly wanted to to make sure that I shared that with you and everybody else in the listening audience. Now, um, uh, when I take a look at any, so let me go back to UNG. Uh, was there anything else that you needed other than, I'll pull that chart back up for you. Anything other that you needed other than a daily breakout level, which was $6.60, I believe? No, that's it. I, I don't have any position. I've just been, of course, watching it like I think a lot of people have. And, and yes. Uh, it's been... I don't know. Not it's been a frustrating trade. I think for most people, I haven't really done anything. I did something way back when it had a pretty big move up. It must have been in the summertime, I guess. I mean, it's been so long ago, I've kind of forgotten. But it had a nice move up, and it did. It was over a week. Over a weekend, it kind of you know something it was, happened it was, where it wasn't quite as cold as it was supposed to be, or whatever the deal was. And it, it kind of took. I mean, I, fortunately, I caught the bottom, so I was able to get out and have a nice game. But. There was a pretty big difference between where it closed on Friday and where it opened on, you know, of course, Sunday and you know, when the actual market opened for the UNG on Monday. But it was all fine. And then I haven't done anything since then. Just been watching. Yes. And I think it's still it's it's a tradable instrument for sure. I just don't think that based upon what we've seen out here uh, that we're going to see some kind of big major breakout. So, for example, when you called, you were asking about UNG and whether or not it had a TD9 count pattern. It does. It doesn't have one that is uh, a tradable just yet. However, the instrument that does have the tradable TD9 count pattern is natural gas. We're looking at the December contract. Today will form bar number nine of a TD9 count pattern. So that says that the low may have uh, for the trade for a tradable 
um, uh, natural gas trade. Um, yesterday's low may have been it. Now, what should unfold here is price should go target its oscillator and change line. That happens to be the bottom of a daily profile that is attempting to form right now. Uh, that tells about overhead supply. So that's really not a good uh, scene out there. But we should get up to about the 338 level off of the uh, daily time frame uh, chart out there. So there is a TD9 count. I think you were just so intuitive. Uh, you weren't sure whether it was on the UNG chart or the uh, natural gas chart. So you're right. You get you get the uh, bonus uh, for that one. Um, I was actually looking at the natural gas. I, I think he just he, he put up the UNG. Uh, ah, did. But, yeah, ah. So yeah, I was looking at the natural gas contract. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go with just you were intuitive. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I like you, that. You, you, you can see into the future, so I, I like that. Yeah. So you do have got you do have a tradable bottom out there, um, absolutely. And uh, you know maybe it can clear that first resistance level of 338. If it could do that, 351 would be a battle. 355 would be a battle, and then the ultimate battle would be at about 369 out there. Um, for me, I'm going to come back to natural gas in January, February, and um, I, and thinking that the uh, uh, the unfavorable seasonal cycle is going to kick in. We have a TD9 count bottom, uh, number nine on a yearly basis, going to complete at the end of the year. You and I know that that bottom can also form on the bar following bar number nine. So I'd like to see even a lower low that we can get in and uh, you know and, and buy out there. Um, so that's what I, that's that's what I've been taking a look at when it comes to natural gas. I hope that that helps you out. Brent, is there anything else that I can assist you with? I think that's it. I've just been doing a lot of day trading, mainly the. I've been using the uh, T triple Q and then the SPY and then just, you know, the SPY for <clears throat> the daily contracts. I, I just do a lot of options. I don't, you know, I, yeah. I do own some actual shares, but yeah, I just prefer doing the options because you can leverage so much, you know, f so many more shares for a, like, you know, f a fraction of the money. Yes, so yes, just, oh, absolutely. To me, it's well, we like, definitely, we, it's something we definitely about it that works. And I mean, the gains that you can make are pretty phenomenal in a short period of time. And I just, I haven't found anything else that I can do that. Yes. Not not the percentages. So it just doesn't work. Well, and, and what's nice is you've got some really great volatility. So we've had some pretty big moves in both directions out there. So uh, I, I'd say just keep that up. And I I keep natural gas off to the side. But I look, it is a TD9 count bottom. So at least on the uh, daily time frame out there. So it's got potential. That's for sure. Well, I appreciate the help, Steve. Have yourself a great day and a great week. You bet. You bet. That was Brent Martinez, California. That was a UNG. We'll close out this chart. We're going to go take a look at SCCO. That's for Hector and Patty. And uh, we're going to, in fact, before we go take a look at SCCO, we're going to stop in and take a look at Dr. Copper. So uh, we'll do that first because SCCO and uh, copper, uh, the copper futures contract, have a real good directional correlation. So what we know about uh, the December contract for Dr. Copper is it's got a buy the D point pattern. And that buy the, that buy the D point pattern, quite frankly, yesterday was also a bullish engulfing candle. So it was a reef confirmation of a buy the D point pattern. I really should set that uh, low up, the key low out here at yesterday's low at 351. But the other one held at 354. Now, you're just trading with inside its daily profile, Hector and Patty. And so this is a bullish structured profile and a close day above 358 should get us to the 366 level. That's the top of the profile. If you can get a close above 366 on a daily basis, really two consecutive closes above that, then Hector and Patty, Dr. Copper will get up towards that 385 level. That would be its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Okay, let's leave it there, and let's go over and now take a look at Southern Copper and get a feel for what Southern Copper is doing. Folks, that ticker symbol is SCCO if you're trying to follow along at home with regard to what Stevie shows on his charts and what you're pulling up there. So let's try to find where Stevie put that SCCO. I think it's here. It is. So Hector and Patty, when we take a look at SCCO, it looks like, well, a yeah, what formed yesterday was a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. Uh, so you've got that bottom in place. A TD9 count is likely to not take place today, especially if the rally continues. In order for a TD9 count bottom to form today, price must close below 71.11. We're trading above that as we speak right now. Uh, I'm going to put up my other charts. I'm going to just on my other screen out here, not for you. I just want to make sure there's no new profile that is attempting to form. And the answer is there is. Perfect. So here you've got a, a bottom. 
Uh, this is not showing you the profile, but I'm going to give you that data to you. And that data says that you have new support. This is a confirmed daily profile. You have support at 69.60. You have resistance at 70.64, which we're trading above right now. So that means and your, your real resistance at a 73.23. So what that tells us, this is a bullish structured profile. So we're going to adjust this call on Southern Copper, and that is this. If Southern Copper can close above 71.12 today, what this should do is run up to 73.23. No idea what it'll do when we get above 73.23, but that would be the run that we would be taking a look at. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out. Thanks as always so much for the request. And we come back to this uh, uh, breakout here, folks. We're gonna take, I think we'll close out the show by looking at UEC, that's for LB who's looking for some price targets. Maybe during this break, you want to figure out what price target you come up with. Maybe we'll come up with the same. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Well, that's not the UEC chart. That is SCCO. Let's see if we get to UEC. That's SCCO. We got that out here a couple times. There we go. This is Uni United Uranium Energy Corp out here. And uh, uh, Lee, in order for this to truly break out, in order for this to suggest that it really wants to run higher, price is going to have to close above its weekly TD9 count top. That weekly TD9 count top that formed the week of September 20. Let me make sure I get the right candle out here. September 29th. And that high is at 577. Granted, we have poked above that. We've gotten up to a high today of, what, 583. But you need to see it close above that. You're trading right into resistance. Not you, but the stock is. And it's right into that bearish structured weekly profile resistance. So the sell zone for Uranium Energy Corp is between 510 and 577. So as good as today's bar looks, and it looks, we take a look at the daily time frame. Price is trading above the swing point. Well, it's not doing that right now, uh, but it was trading above the swing point from uh, September 29th. Now that swing had 20, 21 million shares in the first two plus hours of trading. This has done five million shares. So you're even coming to that swing point with lighter volume. So I don't see a breakout here for Uranium Energy Corp. Instead probably just going to continue with its somewhat sideways just consolidation out here pattern. So, Lee, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, lastly, let me just put up this chart here. This is a 30-minute time frame chart for the NQ, which formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's trading with inside its bullish structured profile. Your price can close below 14,773. It ought to get down to 14,725. The reason to watch that is because on a 30-minute basis right now, the market breadth for the NQ is negative. 12 instruments trading above, 36 below profile levels out there. Watch to see if that 14,773 or 14,725 level holds. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you back here on Wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Take care and have a great day.